Hello everyone, in my last video about uh, ES-121 which was my review somebody asked me to tear this down and yeah I thought to myself why not, I mean the internals might be interesting so yeah that's what I'm going to do for in this video I've already done it once just so I know how I can do it so now I'll be showing to you and I'm also going to do use this as a tutorial so just in case you need to tear this down, you can follow this and you know, you probably need to tear it down for a repair or whatever. And yeah, it should be easy to reassemble after that as well. As for what tools you are going to need, well, first of all I do recommend you have a paper towel because there will be a lot of lubricant inside this and yeah, it will get everywhere. So that's a big recommendation to protect your work surface, but in terms of tools, you will need a 0.9 millimeter hex screwdriver or an allen key uh, you will need uh, tweezers that have bent things like that I didn't have any one, so any one of those so I had to bend these ones but yeah if you can find like pre-bent ones it will make your life easier otherwise these tend to bend back etc so it's not really great but this is what I have so this is what I'm going to use you can also probably use like one of those watch battery cover remover things depending on the design those will probably work as well and lastly you will also need just a regular pair of tweezers that have straight pins and nozzles as well and yeah that's basically it so let's get to it so the first thing is pretty simple you just twist this cap and there you go that's removed now grab your allen key screwdriver whatever you're using and here is a screw it's hard to see because it's tiny it's really hard to see in real life as well but that's a screw so you just unscrew that and there you go and now this black piece is free so what we need to do is just get it out of here there are some clips that's why it's taking some force but don't worry you're not going to break anything it's out of there there's also the button which we can get rid of and I also didn't show but there was this piece on here as well so yeah we also removed that and this is the electronic part of this so to remove this board all you have to do is rotate this until you see the battery and here is a cable that plugs in here as you can see so we just need to get it out of there and yeah do as I say, not as I do, don't try, try to not put any force on the wires themselves, try to get the plug out of the socket instead. This is really not that easy, unfortunately. Ah, there we go. And here is the board with the battery. And this is this battery is basically the reason that this this doesn't really last very long. It's as you can see pretty tiny. In fact, does it have any writing? Yeah, it's only 300 milliampere hours. So, yeah, that's the reason that this doesn't last. So, the next step is to get these tweezers that have bent pins, and you basically need to get one on one of these holes and other side on pretty much directly opposing hole and yeah for this especially if you're just using tweezers that are bent manually this will take a lot of force so try to turn this and yeah now it's coming off and there we go this is the piece that we removed it's basically a threaded knot basically that you hold using those holes and here is a piece that we can remove this basically is just like a, this is as much as it rotates it has the bearing inside are designed to do that so you might have already realized if you try to turn this screwdriver manually this is as much as it turns I don't know if this has anything to do with the detection of the movement direction or I, anything like that I have no idea honestly but mine had a fault in there which was causing the screwdriver to get stuck there was something wrong with these these cylindrical things, I don't know what you call these. So yeah, I had to manually fix that. 
and yeah if you have a similar problem where the your ES121 or probably it's the same for the S120 as well is getting stuck that's the culprit most likely so here is the next part the bearing it is pretty straightforward you just need to grab a pair of tweezers and carefully without actually damaging it pull it out and here it is and now there are two screws and yeah I guess I forgot to mention that at the beginning of the video you will also need Phillips sets uh, you probably have those anyway so it's probably not a big issue that I forgot to mention so yeah you just try to get those out there it actually does turn in there because that's actually just a bearing and the mo sorry the motor and the gearbox so yeah it's going to turn it's not going to be the easiest thing to remove but you should be able to one and I got the second screw out and the rest of the assembly just fell down here is basically a brass nut that you have inside there which is where the screws attach and here is the motor with the gearbox assembly so the, I actually haven't separated these but pro the way you probably separate these is just by unscrewing these screws which are also Phillips sets but they are tiny so try to not lose them And yeah, it's now separating. And here is the gearbox assembly. So you can s I'm turning this very slightly and you can see how much this is turning inside there. That's basically the gear ratio. And yeah, I'm going I'm n I don't know what exactly the gear ratio on this thing was, but it's pretty high. And yeah, you can tell by what you see right now. So let's also remove the top gear, just so you can see the sexy part of the gearbox. So to remove that is pretty simple, you just grab it here and pull it out of there. And here is the best part of the gearbox in my opinion. Look at this thing, it's great. And there are probably multiple layers to this it feels like it's still geared even more than it seems so I'm not don't want to be content I'm not going to actually disassemble the gearbox even further in fear of actually damaging it this is as far as I'm going to go but yeah in case you need to fix something here it's pretty simple and I would also recommend now that you disassembled these parts you probably removed some of the lubricants so I recommend you just adding a bit of lubricant. I'm using this lubricant which is a decent quality one. But if you have anything better I recommend use that instead of the, this stuff. So yeah, let's just put some. I'm going to do it here because I want to add it carefully. Sorry for not actually having it in front of the camera. So yeah, let's now put this top piece that we removed back in. And this is going to be a bit tricky say the least because yeah it's it's not going to seat in that easily you need to turn it until you can figure out the spot that it sits in and yeah this will take some time there we go now that it's seated properly if you turn it as you can see the internals turn this is what it's supposed to do obviously so now we can reattach the motor and yeah I realize I didn't give you a close up this is it basically not going to tear the motor either because you can damage the motors by tearing them down so yeah we just need to reseat this and you just align these two holes so I'm not sure if the camera is picking it up but you will be able to see it with your own eyes if you're actually doing this so you just align those holes insert the motor in there and then grab your screwdriver and the tiny screws that this thing has 
and yeah I probably should use a smaller bit for this assembled it off camera just to save some time but yeah I basically attached those two screws so now we need to attach everything back but before that just try to turn this just to make sure the motor is working properly it will be hard but you should be able to turn it manually and if that's the case that is good but if there's any irregularity then I recommend you actually try to figure it out Okay, there was a little mistake during my teardown that I realized it's not a big deal because it's just a time saving thing but you didn't actually have to remove this brass piece while the motor assembly was in here and in fact it's just easier to do it this way so if you if you want to make it save some time so just attach it like right, right now just like this and using the same screws that we removed obviously now we need to get the bearing in there and that sometimes turns out to be tricky so try to be careful so we just grab this and then we need the piece that is like this that has its grooves on one side and it's solid on the other side we just put it not like that obviously put it on here then grab the piece with the bearing balls in it, place it on top, just like that. And now we need another one with the grooves, and that's usually stuck here, so you just grab it from there. And place it with, again, the grooves going on the side of the balls, just like that. The next part is to attach the end, so to do that just separate these two pieces, it will just fall right off, just like that. Make sure you have three cylinders in these corners, they easily fall off, so that's important. And after you make sure of that, you just grab this, place it with aligning with it, it with the shaft, just like this. And next, you grab this slide it on top carefully and get it to here and this is basically the entire assembly of the mechanical parts of this by the way and yeah basically what we do after is just grab the main body and carefully drop it in place and yeah I'll do this off camera, this can get a bit tricky, but basically you want to, to, to slide in there properly without actually dropping any of these steel sides pieces and while aligning these steel side pieces with the... I don't know if the cam camera is picking that up, but there are some grooves and you need to align the motor properly as well, so otherwise you won't get the thread here remember if we remove the, this piece from there there's supposed to be a female thread here you can't see it right now because it's not properly aligned with the brass piece and the way to do that is just to rotate the motor somehow until you get there or if you did what I just did carefully you would have got it aligned properly so yeah I'm just going to fix this off camera and there we go you can slightly see the threading there, but that's good enough. So now we grab this piece and put it back on. And then again, grab our tweezers with the band pins and screw it decently tightly. You don't need to go too crazy with it, but you want it to be secure. So. Okay, now for the electronics. You just grab the board we removed, place it in here like this, with this orientation. Make sure you have the plug on the correct side. So
so now to attach the motor you just grab the cable that you have and then look at the pin here and you need to insert it there properly I'm going to do this off camera because I can't see it very well in this angle but the thing that you need to pay attention to is the way the, you remove the plug so just look at the shape of the plug here is a little notch on this side and if you actually look on the top as well you'll notice that pins are actually closer to the notch side not the other side and yeah that's basically the shape of the plug in here as well as you can see the pins are closer to the the pins are closer to the side with the notch removed there is it's split as you can see if you pay it if you look at an HD I guess and yeah you basically need to attach it in the way that those two align properly and if it's taking too much force make sure you are actually attaching it properly so stop double check and then sort it it's in there so just like we removed it you just have to twist this without damaging the <sighs> fucking tripod without damaging the cable and, and align it properly here then we need to get the screen and the button inserted this is also a bit tricky you need to pay attention while doing this because well it, the button you very easily falls off because there are no clips so this is the only orientation where you will be able to do it don't turn this the other way around just insert it like this while looking from underneath but yeah there are two clips on the sides and yeah you just try to get it to clip inside the dam properly I'll also do this off camera. And there we go. Now everything is aligned. Now we need to grab that tiny screw that we removed at the beginning, which was a 0.9 millimeter hex screw, which was black. So this one you insert it here. And there was a thread on the PCB. You need to line up it with that. You screw it back in is simple then grab this piece place it on top with this orientation and then screw this and yeah it's done and as you can see from the screen I don't know if you can hear it but it's working just like before so yeah this is it so I apologize for the mistake that I did during the teardown but it's not really a big issue it's just cost you 30 seconds if you followed it as a tutorial uh, other than that everything I did was correct and I hope you found this useful I had to fiddle with this for quite some time to actually figure out how to fix my pro issue with this which was getting stuck and yeah I mentioned it while I was staring down where that problem was so yeah that's it I hope you found this useful as I said if you did please leave me a like down below and thanks for watching